Hello everyone, this is Cindy and today I am going to show you how to use the Pokemon Go app. Specifically, uh, if you are interested in taking part in our Pokemon Go Poke Walk this summer, you can learn more about that by joining our Discord. You can also ask about it on Facebook or just kind of any library employee and we can tell you how to get involved in our Poke Walk. But right now, let's talk about the Pokemon Go app and how to use it. So first off, you're going to want to download it from the App Store or the Google Play Store. It just sort of looks like this, where it has a little Pokeball on it and says Pokemon Go. And after you download it, it does ask you some questions like when you were born, because I think it wants to kind of make sure that you are of legal age to be using an app. Uh, and it will also ask you to create an account or if you already have an account to uh, get an account back. Uh, and so once all you've done that, you can sort of move on into using the app proper. All right, and once you've gotten to that point, it essentially brings you to this welcome screen. You have to accept their terms of service and you can also say if you want to receive events, offers, and updates. All right, and then you're going to go through this beginning sort of uh, screen where they talk to you about just, you know, the Pokemon world, uh, who Professor Willow is, etc., etc. And you get to choose your style. You can spend a lot of time sort of customizing what you look like, uh, anything like that. You know, choose the eyes, skin color, everything. And once you choose something, you do have to click on choose, and that is going to update it. You can also play around with what you look like hat-wise, um, wink a Pikachu visor, um, anything like that, if you want to be wearing a necklace or something. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of customization, but I don't want to spend too terribly much time on that. You can also update it later. So this shows you how to capture Pokemon. So basically, you every time you play, you have a little map that looks like this. It maps approximately to the current location that you're in. Uh, so these streets actually do kind of correspond with the streets around me. And Pokemon will pop up randomly around you. And you can try to capture them or you can ignore them. Uh, the point of Pokemon, uh, if you don't know, is that you do want to like capture as many Pokemon as you can because you're trying to catch them all. So in this starting one, we just capture any of them. Let's go with Charmander. You can also give access to your camera if you want to do augmented reality. So it can look like the Pokemon is actually in the the reality the area the room wherever you are it does eat up a lot of your battery uh, so i don't necessarily recommend doing that for everything but you can and then when you want to capture a pokemon as it shows you you can sort of use your finger to twirl it around that gives you a little bit of spin which gives you like a a special feat and then you sort of flick and try to throw the Pokeball at the Pokemon. Uh, and often it'll be like this where it just gets captured, but sometimes uh, it will break free and you have to try to capture it again, or it'll break free and it'll flee, uh, and then that Pokemon is gone for the time being. And then when you capture something, you get XP points, and XP points are how you sort of level up and get stronger. Every time you get a Pokemon, it's going to register your Pokedex, which is like a little uh, encyclopedia of your Pokemon. 
At this point, you can give your nickname. Uh, you can use your real name. You know, I'm just going to say Cindy. But, you know, if you want to call yourself like Skywalker or Stargazer or, or Bobby, and if your name's not Bobby, go for it. <laughs> oh. You do have to choose a name that isn't currently available, so you can't necessarily do just like your regular name. Um, I'm going to do Cindy... W. Let's see if that's ready. Yep. And I can say yes, and we can try to change it later as well. There are things called Pokestops, uh, and they're mapped to the area around you. Uh, like Professor Willow says, they can be different sculptures and monuments, they can be government buildings, they can be uh, churches, universities, libraries, a bunch of things. Okay. So, this is what the world I've leveled up. Yay me. And I get a few little things, little Pokeballs and berries. And so this is what the world around me actually looks like. So as you can see, there are some Pokemon around me. If you want to catch one, I'm going to click on this one. I'm not going to do my camera. And I can try to catch it. But if you click on the icon, this is when you can choose like what different uh, Pokeballs you have because there are more than one Pokeball. And there are, oops, I missed. Try again. Got to throw a little harder. There we go. And so you can use different Pokeballs for different levels of Pokemon. Uh, each Pokemon will have a certain number next to it. And the higher the number, the stronger the Pokemon. So this is registered my Pokedex. Let me show you where that number is. Yay. I don't want to do anything with the camera. <laughs> so... This is our little Pokemon, and if we look at the top where it says CP12, that is sort of like the level or the strength of your Pokemon. So when a level is low, when the number is low, you can use a Pokeball and probably catch it pretty easily. But the higher the number, the harder it can be to catch that Pokemon. So you might have to try again and again. You might need to use a berry. You might need to use like an Ultra Ball instead of a regular ball. It just kind of depends. So we've talked about catching Pokemon. I've leveled up again. When you first start out, it is very, very easy to level up. But now I'm gonna show you what a Pokestop is. So Pokestops are these round things right here that uh, sort of have like Pokeballs in the middle uh, and you just click on one. You do have to walk, you have to physically walk with your app open to these stops to actually get to them. You can see we're at the Pulsar Public Library, and then you can get things at Pokestops. So you flick your finger across it and spin this icon, and as you notice, a bunch of things pop up, and then you use your finger to pop those bubbles, and now you have gotten things. If you press the side, uh, you can scan the stop, you can view it on the map, you can do a bunch of stuff. Or if you're just done, you can exit on out of it. And then this big thing next to our two stops, this is known as a gym. Uh, it's a place where you can fight uh, with your Pokemon against other people's Pokemon. Uh, right now, I don't have a lot of experience. I also don't have very high level Pokemon. So as you can see, you know, this Pokemon, this big one, it's called a Snorlax. It has, you know, 2,973 CP, which means it's pretty darn strong. And then the Pokemon next to it has 819, which is also fairly strong. What you can also do at po come back when you reach level 5, got it. What you can also do is, like Pokestops, you can flick your finger uh, and you can collect more items at your Pokestops. And so the way you become stronger is you just walk around and you kind of level up things. So let's see if we can click on this Pokeball right there. So this takes you to your menu. So that Pokeball is your menu. And you can do a lot of things in the menu. For example, you can check out 
how many Pokemon you have. So I currently just have two, just CP12, both fairly low, but that's okay. And if I click on the thing in the lower right hand corner, I can also kind of filter how I look at my Pokemon. This will matter more when you get more Pokemon, but it's a good way for if you want to, you know, put the Pokemon with the highest combat power up front, you can click on that. If you want to uh, click on the Pokemon by Poke number, because each Pokemon has a number in the Pokedex, like that's how you can do it. There's a bunch of different ways. You can also click on each of your Pokemon to learn more about them here. So for example, what if you wanted to name your Pokemon? You don't want to just call him Charmander, it's special. So you click on the little pencil and you can set a nickname to your Charmander. I'm just going to call him Buddy. Gonna hit done and then okay. And now his name is Buddy. And you can learn a lot of stuff about him. You can also try to power him up or evolve him. You do have to get like a certain, they're called candies. That's what these round circles are. Uh, and you get candies for each individual Pokemon by catching more of those Pokemon. So if you look right now, you can see that I have some Stardust, which I got from catching and leveling up. And I also have some Charmander candy, which I got by catching this Charmander. I don't have enough to evolve him. I need 25, but I can power him up. So, you know, I can click on that and choose, I'm going to use, I can't go with four because I only have three. So I'm going to go three and power up. Yes, I want to power up Buddy. I want to make him stronger. Now he has more HP. He has more life. Now he has a stronger combat power. It's 53. And so if I wanted to use him, um, if I wanted to use him in like a, a battle, he would be a little bit tougher now. We also have things called eggs. Uh, so what you can do when you get an egg is you can incubate it. Have this one, and there we go. And the reason these eggs matter is that when you have your app open and you're walking around, because this app encourages you to walk and to get out and to be active, when you're walking around and you have an egg in the incubator, as you walk, this one says it wants you to walk 10 kilometers, a little bit under five miles, I think. So if you walk 10 kilometers with this egg in the incubator, your egg will hatch and you will get whatever Pokemon is inside. And sometimes they're really cool Pokemon, sometimes they're really rare Pokemon. Uh, it just kind of depends on what random thing you get. So you want to make sure you put those eggs in incubators. Let's look at the menu again. So we've looked at our Pokemon. We can also look at our items. That lets you know what you have. And fortunately, the items do a great job of telling you, you know, what they are. You've got a camera so you can take photos of your Pokemon. You've got incense so you can attract Pokemon. Uh, you get a bunch of Pokeballs. Uh, you get a bunch of berries, incubators. And if you click on any of the trash cans next to them, you can delete them. And uh, let's see. So that's what it looks like. And you can choose to delete all of your Pokemon, Pokeballs or just one. So you don't have to delete a full item. I'm going to cancel though. And the only reason you would want to do that is because you can only store a finite amount of items in your backpack. So you can see at the top under items it says 97 out of 350. I can only hold 350 items. And so if I ever get close, I can start discarding some of them so I can carry others. Back to menu. Shop, as you might kind of guess, allows you to get free items, but it also allows you to purchase items. You don't have to purchase items to, um, to kind of do any, to, to really play Pokemon Go, but it can be helpful. You can also get these coins as you level up, as you increase combat power, as you collect Pokemon. So if you really, really want something, you can try to just like wait um, and get them for free. Our Pokedex is uh, our little, that little encyclopedia, uh, essentially, of Pokemon. 
you can see up top that it tells you how many you've caught and how many you've seen. Uh, and so it also tells you what regions, because Pokemon come in a bunch of different regions. And you can click on anything, and that will, you know, tell you a bunch of information about that Pokemon. So I've caught a Charmander. Let's see. We haven't done too many. And then I have seen a Doduo. That was in the gym. And I, if I've only seen something and not caught it, I don't know as much about it. But I can, you know, at least get its name. And so you can just kind of keep going down. See, there's the Snorlax. Keep going down. And look at kind of everything that you've seen and caught. Uh, it's also fun because the map changes to reflect the weather. So right now it's, it's raining outside. So my map looks like it's raining. And another fun thing with that is that that will affect what kind of Pokemon you find. If it's raining, they often have a lot of grass or water Pokemon. If it's really hot and sunny, you might get more fire and ground types. So it's a really cool kind of interactive uh, thing. And all right, you can also like click on settings, change all these things. Uh, you can click on your little icon over here. Um, it'll tell you stuff. And uh, you can like rotate yourself to look at you. You can scroll down, change your style. <laughs> scroll down again you can choose a buddy which will be the pokemon that um is next to you so you can play with them and you can now see i've got my little charmander buddy next to me and he's my buddy and so that's kind of all we can show you with pokemon go right now there are a ton of little features. It is a, it's a fun little game, and it is a nice way to kind of encourage yourself or your kids or your friends or whomever to get out and to go walk and to go to specific areas. Because as you can see in Frankfurt, there are a lot of Pokemon stops. There are a lot of Pokemon gyms, and each of these stops corresponds to something different in Frankfurt, to a church, to a plaque, to a statue, to a monument. And so it's a really great way to encourage yourself to go and see your local area, whether you live in Frankfurt or you live elsewhere. Um, usually if you live in like a, a town or a city, there will be more stops, but there will still be some stops and some Pokemon uh, in more rural areas as well. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this by no means exhaustive look into Pokemon Go, and I hope you'll look into our Discord and participate in the summer Poke Walk with us. We'd love to have you, uh, and uh, we hope that you have a great day. All right, bye-bye!